Hi, my name's Anna and I'm a Trafalgar Travel Director um, and I lead um, trips around Spain. Um, we've just completed a nine day Spanish wonders with a wonderful group and um, we've had an amazing time. Um, so basically I organise all the, the, the itineraries. So this trip we have gone through um, some incredible places. We started off in Toledo um, after having an amazing welcome dinner together. So we all went out for tapas in a really cool market, really trendy food market in Madrid. And then the next day we went down to Toledo, which is this amazing, historic, 2,000 year old city. Um, we went to a church to visit a painting by um, El Greco and to uh, the Jewish Quarter. Um, and then we walked through the old town just mesmerizing. It looks like a film set from hundreds of years ago. It's absolutely incredible. From there we went back into Madrid, saw the Royal Palace, the Cathedral, the Old Town, the Plaza Mayor. Um, and then after Madrid, um, well, we had an incredible night out. Oh my goodness, Casta Fiore. We go to this very kind of hidden restaurant where they have the waiters who serve you food and then burst out into Spanish traditional zarzuela operata music. So they were singing right in front of you on your table and then serving you food and then singing to you. So much fun. Um, we went from there then to uh, Cordoba, which everyone loved. Everybody's commented to me for the whole week how incredible Cordoba was. Not only because it was the epicenter of power of Moorish Spain, um, so this really historic building with what looked like 850 kind of candy stick arches all around um, the building. The history is phenomenal. It was the most powerful place for the Muslim world next to Cairo and Baghdad. So really, really powerful, beautiful building. And our guide, Hema, she is mesmerizing. So she took everybody around on an hour tour of the mosque, which is the cathedral and mosque. Um, and she gave this incredibly in-depth, passionate talk about the history of the building, the history of the people, the history of the civilization there at the time, how powerful, how creative, how educated, how intellectual they were. And she just brings it alive, the building, the people, the history, it's amazing. Um, so she's one of our favorites in Spain. Um, we left from there. I think a few people tried some of the local treats, local specialities, which is bull's tail soup and um, salmoreco, which is a lovely cold soup as well, very traditional in Cordoba. Um, and then we left from there and we went to Seville. We arrived in Seville and we had a beautiful big flamenco show. So we learned a few moves, how to, fl how to, how to dance flamenco. Um, I'm sure you're gonna learn when, uh, when, when you see this video. You have to ask, how do, I, how do I learn the flamenco steps? So it's two very, very easy ones. So basically we have two easy ways to dance flamenco. We say in Granada, always in Andalusia. So we teach people by saying um, two easy steps. So in Granada they're pomegranates and Seville they're oranges. So you grab your orange or your pomegranate from the tree. You look at it like passionately, like you want to eat it, and then you chuck it on the floor because it's rotten. So that's it. Oh, beautiful, your flamenco dance. And then the second move, everyone, you have um, in a house, a hundred cockroaches coming towards you. The word cockaracha. There they are. What do you do? You need to stamp them out. So you go. There you go. Your flamenco moves, everyone. <laughs> you have to get everybody to show you this now when you're watching the video, right? Um, when we left from, uh, no, then Seville, we went for an amazing sightseeing morning. We went through the old town, the old Jewish quarter. We went to all the monuments and buildings that were built, the plathas, the squares, built for the 1929 exposition, um, the Iberian American exposition. We walked through these lovely, like, small cobbled streets, whitewashed houses with flower boxes and and Bourgogne sweeping over all these lovely alleyways going through the old town, it's gorgeous. We went to the UNESCO World Heritage Alcazar, which is the oldest inhabited castle in, um, one of the oldest, most oldest inhabited castles in Europe. And we went to the Cathedral of Seville, the third largest cathedral in the world and the largest Gothic cathedral. So you can think about what are the two larger ones but they're not gothic all right so seville is the is the biggest gothic cathedral in europe um where christopher columbus is buried where some of him is buried because he's you know been buried and unburied and buried and unburied so many times around the world um that's just a part of him in there but he has this wonderful gorgeous tomb um and then we had an afternoon free there to eat tapas and enjoy and then we went to the be my guest um farm so 
we drove out for 30 minutes out of the city and we went to Isaac's house, 300 year old finca, which is a country house in Spain where he's got um, a huge olive oil farm um, and he is an absolute connoisseur, um, passionate about olive oil and um, the olive farm and uh, he has kind of revolutionized the way we are making olive oil and he harvests all the olives right in the beginning of their ripeness in October so they get the best flavor. Terrible for business because there's hardly any oil in them. As they ripen until December, they get heavier and heavier and heavier with oil, but they lose their flavor. So he makes the olive oil in October, um, and it is just incredible. We all had olive oil on our salads, on our bread, and then we had it on our dessert. So anyone think of putting olive oil with ice cream? Ah, it is amazing, absolutely amazing. So we had olive oil on our ice cream to finish the dinner. We were in his home, his beautiful tables in his courtyard. Again, Bourgogne everywhere, just really beautiful setting in his family home. His ne nephew cooked for us, it was just beautiful. Very, very special experience to be my guest at Trafalgar because they um, take you into someone's home and give you a personal experience. You're a, you're a family's guest for the night, even though we're 50 people. Imagine, I always laugh with everybody at the beginning, imagine the washing up, all the knives and forks you need, all the plates and cups. Um, so they do a wonderful job of hosting us for an evening and it just feels like a really personal, warm experience with a family and home-cooked meal. It's beautiful. Um, and then we went from Seville to Granada. We went to Granada, we walked through the old town, the Albaicin, which was the old marketplace for the people living and working in the palace of the Alhambra. So a traditional whitewashed village, sweeping down the hill, lots of squares and patios and arched windows with ceramics, just so beautiful. We went down to the Royal Chapel where Isabel and Fernando are buried um, with their daughter, Juana La Loca and Felipe in this beautiful um, chapel that they built for their resting place because they loved Granada so much. Um, they adopted the pomegranate as their symbol because they just fell in love with the city. It's so beautiful. Then we had some lunch and went up to the Alhambra. Oh my goodness, breathtaking. One of the most incredible places you could ever see in your life. You have views over the city, the Sierra Nevada mountains, the Albaicin, the Sacred Mountain, all the way down over Granada. The palace itself, the Red Palace, is just seeped in history of one of the most powerful dynasties, the Nadris dynasty um, of the Moors in Spain. They were there until 1492, so this was their pinnacle of, of, uh, of technology and design, and they were creating heaven on earth and the whole place plaster alabaster, carved walls everywhere and it is a slice of heaven, absolutely beautiful. Um, after Granada we went to, um, to a little very special hidden treasure. So I took everyone to see a friend of mine who lives in a cave home. In the province of Granada we've got the largest settlement of cave people or people living in caves in the whole of Europe. And we went to Paco and Mariangel and their two little, little children's house in a cave that was dug out in 1876, where his great-great-great-grandfather lived there, um, where he lived. He's, Paco now is the fifth generation, and his children are the sixth generation of people living in the caves. Amazing. We went through the house, he brought us in, he told us all about how the reason why they have the caves in these clay mountains, you don't need structural support, they breathe. Um, but they, you know, they don't, they're not uh, affected by rain, they're not affected by movement in the earth, it's just brilliant. The only thing they lack is windows, of course, so if you're claustrophobic, not the best place to live. But we walked all the way through nine rooms of Paco's cave house, all dug out by hand. Um, and then we went up onto the second floor and then he's opened up a museum on the top where he's bought um, uh, like our old antiques of things that people used in the cave homes over the last hundred years. So just, Amazing, everybody came away breathtaking, just wow, to go inside someone's home and see how they live in a cave home, it's just incredible. Um, we drove all that way the afternoon down to Valencia. Um, in Valencia we went to see Santiago Calatrava, a very famous architect from the city. We went to see his showcase piece of architecture in the old riverbed. It's called the City of Arts and Sciences and it's a complex of cultural and um, artistic buildings, so our Palace of Arts and the Natural Sciences Museum, the largest aquarium in Europe, uh, enough water in the middle to have 18 Olympic swimming pools, so it's just an amazing building and um, we took photographs of that, really incredible contemporary structure and then we went in for an orientation around Valencia, saw the bullring and the 
town hall and the markets and then stopped in the main square um, and some people went to the cathedral and some people had something very traditional from Valencia in a 200 year old cafe. Then you get horchata, which is, a, we call it tiger nut milk, or it's made from what we call chufas, little like potatoes that, um, in fact, they come from the potato family. I should really say potatoes, it doesn't sound very appetizing because you make milk from it. So potato milk sounds awful, um, but it's chufa milk and it's like a plant milk. It's like an almond milk or a hazelnut milk. Um, and it's cold and it's sweet and it's refreshing and you have these kind of um, savoury pastries that you dip in um, and it's just gorgeous and some people chose to have churros and chocolate so that was a special treat for, for, for you guys um, in a lovely old cafe, something very traditional from Valencia um, and then we had a, an included paella, traditional paella in the hotel that evening um, the traditional paella from Valencia was, you know, was peasants' food. It's very different to what you would expect. So it was an interesting um, uh, experience. The next day we went to Peñiscola. Oh my goodness, everyone loved it because we had two hours on the beach in the Mediterranean. So people dipped their toes in the water. Um, Peñiscola is basically, if you've ever seen Mont Saint Michel um, in France, it's a little peninsula that juts out from the side of the, the, the mainland and it was a walled castle city originally so this lovely old town within walls that was built by the moors and then later on the castle by the knights templars in 1296 um, and then lived in by one of the most famous anti-popes called the papa luna um, and um, and it's really special because you've got these giant walls and then lovely old town a castle sitting up at the top and it's where they filmed el Cid with charlton heston and sophia loren and then sweeping down from the old town, there's this gorgeous, huge, massive um, beach, which I was told by everybody from Florida that I cannot call white sand <laughs> because it's kind of yellowish, um, <laughs> but it's gorgeous and it's a beautiful beach for us in Spain. Lovely water um, and lots of people there. Yeah, I went down onto the sand, ate uh, along the beachfront and walked through the old town, through these lovely old small cobbled streets. It was just gorgeous, beautiful place. Um, we left from there and arrived in Barcelona. <gasps> Oh, Barcelona, absolutely beautiful. We picked up our guide, we did a sightseeing, we saw Gaudí's houses, we saw the Sagrada Familia, um, all the exterior, we walked around and learned all about the architecture and the design and Gaudí and his work and his life. Um, we saw the Plaza Catalunya, La Rambla, this really crazy busy street filled with people and performers and street shops and kiosks and the markets and it's just wonderful um, and then we went for an incredible dinner and we went for like a chiringuito like a waterfront restaurant down at the Olympia port and everyone had lots of seafood to start lots of sharing plates in Spain you eat things um, very socially so the plates come to the middle and you share everything on the table so it's very lively very fun um, and then there was the magic fountains after the dinner so we drive down to the Plaza de España with the National Palace that was built for the 1929 Spanish Exposition which is beautifully lit up at night with lights coming right the way back from the palace and then fountains all the way down the side and the big fountains in the middle that dance to light so they have a show from 9 until 10 o'clock on Friday and Saturday nights and it lights up with music and they were celebrating the International Jazz Festival so they had jazz playing with the lights and the music and we all ran up to the top to see it and we stood watching and filming all these lights and magic fountains dancing. Very, very special event here since 1929 in Barcelona. And today we had a gorgeous day because we went out to Montserrat this morning, which is the sacred mountain of Catalonia. Um, it's this, what we call sawtoothed mountain. So it has serrated edges at the top, very strangely look like chimneys, something out of the Flintstones. And when we, went, when we drove up this morning, we got this incredible mountain pass um, and this, the mist was still sat right over the top of the mountain, so we couldn't really see it. But we're driving up more and going up this lovely mountain lane the mist started lifting and the sun started directing straight onto the mountaintops and it lit up so spectacularly, it was amazing. Um, watching that just, wow, took my breath away and I'm sure everybody's. And when we got up to the top, the mist had lifted so we came off the coach and walked along and saw these incredible views down over the valley. And then the guide walked everybody up to the monastery where 
one of the most special monasteries in Catalonia. The Barcelona Football Club go up there to pray before they play a football match. Um, and it has the Black Madonna, a very sacred relic here in, uh, in Barcelona and Catalonia. So people come from all over to visit. It was packed this morning. It's so lovely. We got up there early before the crowds. And then everyone had a free afternoon in Barcelona to enjoy. Walking around the Gothic Quarter, the Bocaria food markets, and went to museums and went down to the beach, Barceloneta, and had a wonderful afternoon before enjoying a beautiful dinner together in a restaurant overlooking the port and the marina with some of the most luxury yachts um, in uh, in the country so it was a gorgeous farewell dinner this evening um, lots of love after nine days traveling together it always is you connect so well with everybody like-minded people wanting to see the same things and experiencing the same things it's just a beautiful way to travel it really is and you Ah, oh, still, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible experience and we've had an amazing time this last nine days. So thank you so much to everyone who was here um, and I hope to see you all soon back in Spain. Thanks.